Hello everyone, this is Mikey in 6IL, and today I'm going to give you a little demo of an upcoming feature that's in the PyDrive Wire server, which is uh, deload protocol support. That's uh, coming up soon. And I'm going to use this to load the Coco Talk Game On Challenge of the Week Megabug. So let's dive right in. So I have here the instructions for the next version of PyDrive Wire. And these are not quite complete instructions. It's kind of like a brain dump that explains how to do some of the things in here. But um, down towards the bottom, I actually have step-by-step -step instructions of what I'm going to demonstrate today. And that is what I, we're going to load something over the deload protocol using the PyDrive wire server. So I have a diagram here of what we're actually setting up. MAME inside of it actually has fairly rich serial port support. So what's going on inside of MAME is this box here, where it says Coco 1 and 2. This is actually the computer that's being emulated. Okay, and um, what you can do with this is since the Coco has a Bitbanger port, you can control where that Bitbanger port goes. You can connect it to, said another way, you can connect it to something uh, in the outside world. What we're going to connect it to today is we're going to connect it to, you know, to a, no, a null modem cable. And there's actually a transceiver that we're connecting it to, which is called the Bitbanger port. It's a little bit confusing because on the Coco, you have a Bitbanger port and MAME has its own Bitbanger port. But we're, what we're essentially doing is we're using this null modem cable to connect the emulated Coco into this, this other Bitbanger, which is running inside of MAME. And what we can do with this other Bitbanger, this one, which is running inside of MAME, is we can actually connect that to a TCP IP socket. And if you can connect it to a TCP IP socket, then you can actually connect it into the PyDrive Wire server. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Um, I have the step-by-step uh, -step instructions here on how to do that. Um, start PyDrive Wire server the same way you would for a Becker port, which is basically listening on port 65504. You start MAME, uh, and you basically say, hey, I want to connect the Coco's RS-232 to the null modem, and then that null modem connects to a Bitbanger, and that Bitbanger connects to a socket. So this is actually this command here is actually the plumbing that needs to be done to make this work. Um, there's one small trick, which I will explain a little bit later. Um, you have to make a small uh, change in the timing table for deload. Deload actually has its own serial port timing completely separate from the printers. And there's one, one byte for that, which you can uh, poke. Make, you can do a poke to uh, set that particular uh, that particular baud rate setting, and then you can run deload or deload m. So these are the instructions. So let's start with number one, starting up PyDrive Flare. All right, so I have my, uh, I actually have it running here. Let me just show what we're actually doing. It's pretty simple, running the PyDrive Wire server. It's listening on port 65504, and there's the UI port as well. Just very basic, very basic options here. Um, when this finally makes its way onto the main line and into CocoPie and whatnot, uh, you're not going to have to do this command line stuff. I'm just doing this uh, for example. Okay, so step one starting the PyDrive wire server, that part is done. So step two, let's actually get MAME up and running. Okay. Um, 
Let me just make sure I'm on the correct window here. I actually want to go to this one. All right. So we need to start MAME. And I want to use Coco to H. And I need a couple of special options here. Import and we want it in a window. Change resolution. And now let's do the serial port plumbing. All right, according to our instructions, we need to do RS-232, no modem, blah, 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 blah. Fine. So go back over here. And when we run this one, MAME should actually start up. Oh, I made a mistake. All right, so as you can see, we have MAME running now. Okay, let's switch back to our instructions. Okay, step three, set an adjusted deload timing loop. See the table below for poke commands. So um, a couple of months ago, I worked with Tim Lindner uh, to try to get deload working under MAME. And what we found out was that actually there is not really a bug with MAME. There's not really a bug with the COCO or the COCO ROMs. Um, what's actually going on is the, you know, as I showed in this diagram, this bit banger that MAME has, the timing is very, very tight inside that code, very, very exact. So if your emulation's baud rate because it's a bit bigger, it's a software baud rate. It's not drawn not by a crystal, crystal oscillator like a, a UART would be. Because the Coco is also doing bit banging. If its timing is slightly, slightly off a little bit, MAME actually has a lot of trouble detecting that this is what's going on. So in order to fix things, um, I did some work with Tim and did some calculations. If you want to do this deload over MAME and have it work reliably, these are the, no the exact numbers that you need to poke in. So today for today's demo, I'm actually going to use 2400 baht. So we need to poke E19 into E6. Poke. E six nineteen. So according to my table, if you take a look at it, this is actually for twenty four hundred baht. So what I need to do now is I need to tell MAME to also use twenty four hundred baht. Let's go in and do that. We go to machine settings, machine configuration. And our two thirty two settings are here. Here's the RS two thirty two baud rate. We're using twenty four hundred baud today, and that's already here. You can change it, but we do not need to. The rest of the settings, the default settings, eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit, all of these settings are all fine. Exactly what we want. So let's get out of here. Okay, so now my Coco side is set up. Let's go back to the instructions again. Number, th uh, okay, uh, we did number three. Number four, we need to enable deload on the PyDrive wire server. So um, I'm going to use the use the web view for this. So uh, there's one thing that I need to note. Um, 
in PyDrive where, unfortunately, you cannot run dload and DriveWire both on the same. You can run them on different instances, but on one instance, you can't use both protocols at the same time. That does not work. Because what I have to do is, let's look at the dload status. It says dload is disabled. Dload enable. All right. So now that I've typed dload enable into this, the PyDriveWare server is no longer speaking it just in this this instance. What I mean by instance is dw. There are actually multiple instances here. I'm talking about this kind of instance, not uh, not for not instance as an example. PyDriveWire instance, server instance. So I have configured this instance zero. I've configured this one to do dload. Okay, so there's one other thing we need to do. Um, dload actually serves files to the Coco, so we need to start preparing for that. Here I can take a look at the all of the configured directories in PyDriveWare. So when I'm doing the current directory, it says this is just the directory where I have PyDriveWire running. Um, we need to change this dload directory. So we do dload setter and I actually have the files at a specific location. I will switch to that in a moment. Home pi demo. All right. So let's switch over to this directory and have a look to see what is there? All right, so here I am in a shell, and uh, let's see what we have in this directory. This directory is the one that I just configured, home pi demo. I have the a disk image for this week's game on game, which yeah. Okay, so. Dload, as I said before, the dload protocol serves files to the Coco. It does not serve disk images. So we actually need to get the file out of here that we want the Coco to actually load. So can do that using toolshed. Deck B dir megabug.disk. What do we have on here? We have a megabug.bin. So let's copy this guy off. Deck B, copy, megabug.disk, megabug.bin. Um, Dload only supports six character file names. So, megabug is actually seven. I need to drop one. Let's copy to MGA bug. And I need to tell it to keep it in binary format. Okay, I made a mistake. Looks like megabug.disk, megabug.bin. What did I do wrong? I forgot a letter. There we go. All right. So now I have my megabug file and we're loading. It says 8.1K. This is actually a bin file and that's exactly what we need. We literally just copied this bin file that was here on the disk image and we copied that out into this file called MGA bug. And we already told PyDrive layer that uh, this is the file that we want to use. Uh, this is the directory that we want to use, rather. So I think we're all set. Let's just uh, quickly check the instructions once again to make sure that we haven't skipped anything. All right. Enable the load protocol. And OK. Yep, 
you set up the file, so I think we're finally ready to do some deloading. Okay, so this is uh, back at the high drive layer server prompt. I have this up so you can actually see what happens when you actually do the deloading. We'll actually be able to see all the bits and bytes go by. All right, so deload m, which does actually work if you have um, extended basic 1.1 or later, this does work. MGA bug and fingers crossed, here we go. If it works, we should see the, all of the data going by on the on the screen. And there it goes. Loading, loading. This takes, I believe, about 30 seconds or so to load this. like we're done. The only thing left to do at this point is to play our game. Let me get prepared for this. All right, I need to click a I need to click a few buttons in here to get this get this to look right and then we'll be all set. I'll turn this one off and turn this one off. Okay. Okay. Let's see what happens when we type exec. Okay, I want to make one small adjustment here, so give me one moment, and we'll make that adjustment. Alright, I think we're all set here, so let's go. Okay, picked up my controller and let's see how fast or slow it takes me to get killed. That is stupid bugs. See how I always get caught in this? Wow. Uh, I think I'm in trouble. I better go over here somewhere. Another dead end. Oh no, no, no. I see the buggy. I see the buggy. There's more buggies. Is there some way to kill the buggies? Or are you just like stuck? Ah! Ah! Come on, controller issues. No! It's actually not an issue with the controller, it's an issue with the meat between the. Oh! No! Ah! We gotcha! We gotcha! <sighs> Should I play again? Let's give it another shot. Actually, I want to go this way. I know he's chasing me. Hopefully this isn't a dead end down here. I didn't 
didn't look. I don't remember. Oh, it is. Oh, no. I'm going to have buggies to... Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Let's go over here. Oh! Oh! Oh, no! I'm so lame. I can only cover about a quarter of the map. Alright, whatever. It takes off in that direction all the time. How are you supposed to be able to see where the buggies are? I think there's one coming right at me, is there? Uh, it's down a little bit. But there's nobody down in this corner at the moment. Uh-oh. Uh, that's not where I went. Somebody's coming, I see that. Let's try going over here. There's somebody up there. I don't think he can get me. Oh, yes, he can. Oh, okay, he went the other way. Good. Let's sneak in here. Oh! That's about the longest I've ever gone. Actually, getting a little better at this game. Play one more time, and then if I get killed, then we're going to end it. I think this is getting about 25 minutes or something. over my steps. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, looks like I'm dead. So, looks like my um, score is 10.55. At least for this uh, iteration. Yeah. So, that's it. We just uh, gave a little. Whoops, I meant to open this one. Gave a little demo of. Using PyDriveWare's soon to be released deload module to load and run Megabug. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye everyone.